Okay, well, given the time, here's what we're not going to do. We're not going to ask another round of questions. But given the unchecked power I've been given as moderator, rather than a one-minute closing, each of the candidates will have a two-minute closing. That will allow them more than a fair share opportunity to state their views on whatever they did, they got a chance to address, and more importantly, what they didn't get a chance to address tonight. I want to show you guys real quick. These are the unasked questions. There's a lot of them, and that's simply because we just don't have enough time. And for that, I apologize. It's not the sort of thing where we could simply go on until midnight. But in order to get out, everybody out of here on a timely fashion, we're going to give each of the candidates two minutes to address whatever closing remarks they might have tonight. Uh, we'll start with Representative Woodall. Thanks, Jim. Thanks for, uh, for uh, moderating us uh, tonight. Thanks to the UPCCA for, uh, for having this and for the candy bowl that's been uh, individually named for each one of us up here. Thank you uh, for that. And, and thank you, guys. I, I tell every school group that I talk to that they have been misled when they were told that America is run by 51 percent of Americans, because it's not. It's run by the 51 percent who care enough to show up. Uh, and Peachtree Corners shows up. Uh, I am grateful uh, to you for your, your partnership in what is a team sport. Uh, there's a lot of talk about professional uh, politicians, and if you think I'm a wonderful pro uh, professional politician, if you think I'm the very best, I still don't want your vote. If you think I'm a committed public servant, I'm asking for your vote on November 4th because it matters. The, uh, I got in this race because everybody was talking about what they wanted to do in Washington, D.C. And I wanted to talk about what we could do here amongst ourselves, even when Washington, D.C. didn't work out. We have divided government in Washington, D.C., and things are going to be slow. My commitment to you is I'm going to continue to work across the aisle to make things happen. We've passed not one, not 10, not 100, but more than 200 bills in the U.S. House that have passed with 90 percent support or more. But we can't get those bills moving through the Senate. I hope that will change. I think America needs that to change. But while we've been trying to get those bills pushed through the Senate, in fact, just last week, I got the phone call back from U.S. Immigration State Department that the green cards had come through for two Chinese residents of Gwinnett County who'd been waiting in line, doing everything right for five years, hadn't been able to get their paperwork through. Is that my two-minute clock or my one-minute clock there? That's, that's the two-minute clock? Man alive. You folks are fun to talk to. Let me just say, we solved a case for a veteran last uh, week. He'd been put off by the VA for a year. We got him his benefits. He died 24 hours later. Being able to serve people is what gets me out of bed in the morning. I'm grateful to you if you'll give me the opportunity to serve you for two more years. Thank you. Mr. White. Interestingly enough, in Washington, D.C., there have been two houses in Congress, the House of Representatives and the Senate, for more than 200 years. And the fact that they haven't been able to get, a well, get along well enough to get anything passed in the past four years or six years is the problem in Washington right now. The problem is... We have professional politicians in the Republican Party fighting with professional politicians in the Democratic Party, engaging in obstruction politics as usual. We, the people, have got to break that logjam. We've got to send representatives who are more interested in getting things passed than in getting things past their house. Ladies and gentlemen, when you send me to Washington, my message is simple, and this is what I will do for you. One, you need to know that I'm a patriot, not a professional politician. I haven't ever worked as a staffer in Washington, D.C. I've held one previous elected office, and that's as a city councilman in the city of Lilburn. I want you to know that I love America, and that what I see happening in Washington, D.C. breaks my heart. I want you to know, and yeah, I have it written down here on my iPad so I don't miss anything. I want you to know that in my opinion, to restore America, we must bring manufacturing back. And when you elect me, I will work to provide incentives for Americans to become energy independent in a way that will pass the House and the Senate. I will work to fix our health care and social security systems in a way that will pass the House and the Senate. 
I will work to pass immigration in a way that will pass the House and the Senate. I will work to reform the tax code to ensure that all Americans have an opportunity to share in American prosperity. Send a message to Washington. Vote for change. Vote for Thomas White. Thank you. Senator Miller? It's very, it's, it's very interesting sitting next to two gentlemen running for Congress. Uh, I feel quite lucky that I'm in the Georgia Senate. Uh, you know, we have a balanced budget, we have a triple-A bond rating, and I've seen us be able to do things on a bipartisan basis. You know, I guess I can't talk about being a career politician, because when you get paid $17,000 a year, if that's your career, you're in trouble. But I think what I would like to say to you is this. The longer that I've been down, the more I realize the problems that we have. And it's results that matter, being able to get things done, whether it's in education, okay, whether it's in the health care area. Uh, I will tell you, the last couple of years, I've had the privilege of working with Renee Onderman, who's from Gwinnett County, and I've watched some of the health care issues, and particularly this foster care situation. Autism, which we haven't dealt with down there. One in 64 people in Georgia is effect, are affected by autism. Now, you want to pay for it now, you want to pay for it later. We need insurance coverage for that. My point is this, okay? You need people that can demonstrate they get things done. I've served in a lot of committees. I've been fortunate to pass legislation, and results are what matter. And to me, uh, that's the bottom line down there, whether you be Republican or Democrat. And quite frankly, I would leave you with this. This election, I always say, everyone always says it's the most important one. Well, it is. You know why? It's the next one. And I appreciate you all being out here tonight, because when I hear a statistic that 36 percent of the American people know which party controls a particular branch of Congress, that's pathetic. And apathy isn't something that affects you people. You're here. So I will say this and close with this. I urge you, talk to your friends. Have them become informed, not just vote. Go out and get informed. What a unique concept. We tell our kids to do that all day long. But please, get your friends to be informed and get them to vote on November 4th. Thank you very much for your time tonight. And, Jim, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Ms. Johnson. Thank you all for coming out and, and thank you for moderating. Um, that's one thing we can agree on is that we do want to see things happen here in the state of Georgia. My goal, however, is to have it when we initiate legislation, our legislators need to do it the right way. We need to reach across the aisle. We need to not be divisive. We need to make sure we get beyond our party lines, as I just said. We need to make sure we focus on doing what's best for Georgia. I think Peachtree Corners is a beautiful place. I mean, you ride through here, you can see all the hard work that you put into your community. But Georgia is bigger than just our communities. I want you to drive a little bit further down the road and you'll see that area doesn't look like this. Go a little bit further in, that area doesn't look like this. I want us to reach beyond the boundaries of our local communities and embrace this entire state because if this community succeeds and the next community does it, is still a reflection on us as a, as a state. So we need to make sure that we get beyond our local boundaries and work together to make Georgia better, not just our local communities. I'm not a woman of, whole, of a whole lot of words. I'm a better listener, but I'm all about action. So I encourage you to at least look at my website. It's www.tamaraforgeorgia.com, and hopefully I can get your vote on November the 4th. Thank you. Representative Rice. Thanks again, Jim. Appreciate your job you've done, you've done tonight. And thank you all for uh, coming here. Uh, my challenge is, a, I'm going to say, three things. Uh, first of all, there was a question about economic growth and economic development. You know, the biggest impediment we have in Georgia to economic development, economic growth, really has to do with the things that are going on in Washington. And one of them is the 35 percent corporate income tax rate, which is the highest in the world. And yet, we've been able to overcome that to bring people to Georgia because of the, all the good things that are going on here and because of the investments we make to bring them here. But that's number one. Number two, if you think you're there for a while, for a long time, well, it took me five years of work on this tax bill on the birthday tax. Why? Because there's two million transactions in this state every year that are affected by that particular tax bill. 
And if you want to know how many special interests and people with, I want this, I want that, you've got to fend off and you've got to make, uh, make a chicken soup out of chicken livers. I think that's what the saying is. That's close enough. Okay. All right. Um, that takes a while to do. And you've got to stay in there and you've got to have staying power and you've got to have leadership. Third thing I want to say to you is this. You guys have a lot of empathy for people who have difficulties in this life. I have some empathy, too. It's conditioned by my Christian outlook. But by the same token, I've got people who have come to my office with an autistic daughter who is 18 years old, one of the most beautiful ladies you'd ever want to see. But the only thing she could say was, beep, beep, beep. That's the only thing she could utter. That's the only sound she could make. So we've had some empathy there, and we increased the budget for autism in this state, and I'm proud of that accomplishment. I ask you for your vote this November. Ms. Regman. Thank you. Thank you so much for UPCCA for organizing this event today, and Jim, the moderator. It's really my privilege and honor to be here and address you. You know, serving the community has really natural evolution of everything that I've done in the past. And I hope to use everything that I've learned to help my community thrive and succeed. I was born in Kathmandu, Nepal. And where else but a dream like this could come true? But right here in the heart of District 95, Peace Tree Corners. My grassroots campaign has been amazing. I, I had took a year off to run for office and I've thoroughly enjoyed every bit of it. And I've received this broad support from community which has been overwhelming across party lines, across economic boundaries. And this to me is very telling that you know a community is at the cusp looking for a change. If you elect me, I will serve you with the open door policy and communicate with you and represent everyone in this district and beyond the state of Georgia. I humbly request for your vote on November 4th. Thank you so much. Mr. Howard. Thank you everybody for coming out tonight. I just want to tell you that I am very proud of, of the four years that I have served as your county commissioner. Gwinnett County is one of 36 counties in the country that still maintains a triple, triple A bond rating. It also is the sixth lowest taxes in the state. Um, that, that's huge. And so we do things right. We do things well in, in Gwinnett County and we do them fiscally responsible. One of the things that I'm, I'm very proud of as well is supporting Partnership Gwinnett. We do it with the school board and with the business community and really growing entrepreneurs. That's where the money, that's where your economic boast comes from is, is entrepreneurs and growing the businesses that you have here. We also get international businesses and as, as much as, as the Partnership Gwinnett does that in attracting businesses and the governor, and they do an excellent job. I think it's because we have such a welcoming community for the businesses that we have international businesses that can help other sister companies come here and enjoy the, the benefits that we have here in Gwinnett County. I'm a champion for Gwinnett County. I think we do it right. I also, I've always said if I have an opinion, and I have a lot of opinions, but they can be changed but they have to be changed with facts. And so if you have facts and you have something that, that we're not doing right, I am ready to change and do something different. But those are the criteria of how I like to, um, to, to represent you. And so I look forward to, to representing you hopefully for another four years. If you would like a yard sign, I have yard signs back there and I would ask for your vote on November 4th. Mr. Vari? Well, I'm going to ask for your vote first, in case this book lets me off. So, um, so I, uh, you give me the honor of serving you. Next, I want I want to clarify one thing: the ordinance that we were referring to earlier does not require identification of people 
that are involved in limited partnerships. So if you uh, donate and you're a limited partnership, that's all you have to put on the disclosures, because believe me, I've looked it up. Um, also, too, one thing that I want to mention is that one of the problems I think that we have in Gwinnett County is that we have a tendency to look at things instead of people. And if you've looked, would you ask, I know y'all have gotten your tax bill recently, and when you talk to the commissioners, they'll say, we didn't raise your taxes because the millage rate stays the same. But as a person in here, I would almost bet every one of you are paying more in taxes this year. Just because your property value went up does not mean you got a job or that you're working a good job now. You may still be working at Wendy's or McDonald's. So I think one of the problems that we have to have, and I'm, you know, I think it's honest, but I just think the perspective needs to be changed, okay? We have to start looking at our community as a community of people and not as a community of things. So that is the one perspective that I want to bring to the Board of Commissioners. And with your vote on November 4th, I will try my very, very best to do that. And it's very important that each and every one of you go out and vote. Thank you. The last time I allow you to make up the rules here, but uh, no, no, it's great. That's great. I don't know. I'm looking at my watch. I think I did pretty good. <laughs> yeah. No, I do want to thank several people. Uh, first, let's thank the candidates. Uh, let's give them a round of applause again. Thank you. Be sure to visit with them and their tables afterwards. Grab a, yar uh, a yard sign. I, I will say Rosanna uh, Zabo for Gwinnett Solicitor General, she does have a table back there as well, so uh, make sure to grab her, her stuff as well. Thank you to you as the audience for taking the time to get educated. Thank you to Gray Terry, our timekeeper. I'm amazed you actually were able to keep these guys on time, which is a task in itself. And then uh, finally, I do want to thank uh, Mr. Jim Bloom. Uh, if you'd come on up, I'm going to give you a little gift of appreciation here on behalf of UPCCA. Uh, I want to thank you for being our moderator tonight. So let's give Jim a round of applause. And finally, in closing, I just want to th also thank uh, Lindsay Nelson Stewart for being the first to like our Facebook page from this audience here. So I appreciate you doing that. Remember to reach out to us on upcca.org, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, etc. We appreciate your time tonight. God bless you and God bless Peachtree Corners. Thank you.